Okay, well, here's what we've got on this slide. But well, really, this is the impact of the state aid cuts last year, 2010-11. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare two pieces of data. The combined wealth ratio, which is down on this axis, and then the impact of the loss of the budget cut against the district's budget. Okay? The state's budget cut against the district's budget. The gap elimination adjustment was the amount of money cut from school districts to help solve the state's gap in terms of their budget because they were running a deficit. So what was called the GEA, or the Gap Elimination Adjustment, eliminated the state's gap. Schools weren't the only ones. Municipalities also had cuts, but we had pretty severe. Let me explain this bottom part, the CWR part, this combined wealth ratio. There's really uh, two major factors in, in determining how wealthy a school district actually is. What they do is they compare its income wealth to the income wealth of a school district, average school district in the state of New York. When you fill out your income tax form, there's a little box that says what's your school district code. You, you fill it in. Then they, that way they can add up all the salaries and all the income of all the people who live in the school district. They can do it across the state. So then what they do is they compare the income, total income of your school district to the average. Then what they do is they take another part of the formula and they do the same thing with property values. When the assessor turns into property, uh, levies and all the rest of it and all the data to uh, ORPS. What actually happens is they can add up all the all the uh, property values in your school district. And they can also add them up across the state and they can compare how wealthy in terms of property values your school district is compared to the average. Well you add these two together and they come up with what they call a ratio, a combined wealth, combined wealth, income and property. A district that has a ratio of one must therefore be equal to the average. So if I have a uh, in, uh, combined wealth ratio of a 1, hypothetically, my income and property values on average are equal to the average of the state. Well, in this box, all these people here have an average income, or CWR, income and property value of 1.25 and lower. And so what actually happens here is, is that these people are average wealth to below average wealth because the, the numbers vacillate every year because income and property values change. So we consider 1.25 and lower average to below average. And then what happens though, a district that has a combined wealth ratio of two, their income and property values on average would be equal to twice the state average. And three would be three times the state average. Five would be five times the state average. Eight would be eight times the state average. Actually, I've stopped the chart at eight, even though it goes up close to 30, over 30, because it, it proves the point. So let's take a look at it. So what we have here is increasing wealth going this way and increasing damage to your budget going this way because of the cuts, if you were to absorb those cuts. So as you can see in this real box here, this red box, these are average and below average wealth districts, yet their cuts are very draconian. In other words, this district right over here would have to decrease its budget by 10% or take 10% of its budget out of its own budget to make room for the cut. So all these people are losing a tremendous amount of money to maintain their districts. And it's going to hurt a lot. Meanwhile, here's the wealthy districts, and you'll notice that their impact on their budget is a lot less. Now, truly, they get a lot less state aid, and therefore, when they take certain amounts away, the impact is less. They're less dependent. But these people need every penny they can get to keep their educational program going, so it hurts more. Now, this was in 2010 11. We met with legislators, representatives of the governor's office all kinds of people to talk about this. Look what you're doing. We're actually hurting the people we're trying, we should be helping the most. This is last year's, the one we're in right now, that they just implemented right now. It's actually worse and deeper, mainly because the gap followed, that the state had was $10 billion, much higher than the previous year. So they crossed the board cuts were better, but they obviously didn't change the formula, even though they knew it would disadvantage these low wealth or average wealth school districts. These people now, for the second year in a row, are being hurt with these massive cuts against their budget. So it's becoming increasingly more difficult for them to survive. Now, additionally to this, the aid that was supposed to be distributed to these school districts has been frozen for the last three years, while expenses has, have continued to escalate. So the, the pressure on these budgets is enormous. And again, wealthier districts do better. It's very clear the impact on these people is severe, but it actually is worse than that. This is a chart that talks about the levy when those cuts were made. In order to absorb those cuts, in other words, if I were to tax to get that money back, 
high population. Notice the poor districts would have higher tax increases and therefore be harder to sell those tax increases. They would have to collect what? Let's make it up 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 percent increase in taxes to people who have no money in the first place. They can't pay it. And so what happened is this never materialized. These tax increases never materialized. Why? Because the poor districts laid off huge numbers of staff and they went to their savings accounts that will protect them against future cost increases and they borrowed from their own savings account and they offset the cost of this cut. And then the next year, which is the current year now, the cuts were even more severe. You can see the chart just moved up. I like to make a little cartoon out of this. Look at this. And you can see the cuts move up, become more drastic. So these people down here are actually saying, yep, we, we can make it through with no cuts. We can make it through with a slight a percent or two increase in our taxes. These people here are saying, well, we can do a percent or two, but we just took a couple hundred thousand dollars or almost all of our savings account out, and we just laid off a couple dozen teachers. And what's actually starting to happen now is these people are starting to actually see in their own districts that despite that plan working temporarily, it cannot work for very long because they're now starting to look at eliminating kindergarten or pre-K. And they started jettisoning people like the reading teacher because there's no mandate for reading. You don't need a reading teacher, you just need a teacher. So what's actually happening, we're going to start seeing, I believe, educationally, the literacy score is starting to fail. Meanwhile, we're increasing standards and the tests are getting more difficult. So what this is, is, is this is damaging people from actually being able to provide sound basic educations or even a reasonable education for the 21st century. These people here are doing well and they have the capacity because they're so wealthy, they have huge, huge uh, savings accounts, they have larger uh, capacity to raise funds. Some of these people here, 1% on their levy is like $30,000. Where are you going? You wouldn't even hire a teacher. So it's a problem. And then there's more problems. They actually tried to restore some of the aid, and we got to applaud them for that. I mean, that was a good idea. But it had to go to the districts in the greatest need in the state because the only amount that they restored was $229 million. So it went to the most severely disadvantaged. And if you'll notice, some of these are upstate and some of these are downstate districts. And by the way, we recommended this, that the distribution should be, should be done in such a way as the most impoverished districts get the most money back. But what was added to that formula despite our request was this little green box. All these are wealthy districts getting restorations. Why did they get restorations? There is $28 million in those restorations. It doesn't sound like a lot, but spread between the rest of us, it would merely make a difference. Hey, 20000 here, 20000 there, gets me that teacher aid back. Helps me make that uh, teacher assistant half time or something so I can help that special ed kid or help with our, my academic intervention services. It can make it so I can get those textbooks or the equipment now for my chemistry lab. These things are all important. They mean a lot. Little amounts of money mean a lot to small districts and poor districts. Technically speaking, there's $20 million in here that could have been rearranged. So certainly 29 or 30 percent of it went to New York City and the Big Four. New York City, we have no beef with New York City. They've got over half the kids. They've got 1.1 million kids. There's only 2 million kids in the whole state. So, and they are, you know what their CWR is in New York City? It's one. They are a location that has the, a huge amount of wealth and simultaneously an unbelievable amount of poverty. They are a one CWR. Our beef is not with New York City or even the big four. But you move to some counties and all of a sudden you'll see those CWRs very large. So there's tons of inequity. There's just tons of it. And then they came up with a formula called high tax aid. And this high tax aid was distributed, look at these people in this box, $28 million worth of high tax aid, almost $29 million, to people 1.5 and wealthier. Do they pay a lot of taxes? Absolutely. Do some of these people pay maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in taxes? Yes, they do. But they're not making twenty or $30,000 a year like these people. They don't have a house worth $50,000. They're not a bunch of renters living in squalor in a city like these people. They're not out in the country road like these people. They're living in places they could sell and buy four or five places in the rest of the state with the sale of their, their property. So the truth of it is I don't have a lot of sympathy here. This money should be directed to the people that need it the most. The inequity is growing with every part of the formula.